This episode is sponsored by Imprint. You know when you're driving and you're really low on gas, and that little meter thing is almost at zero, and for a moment you're like, how much farther do you think we could go? Well, that right there is essentially the origin story of the dromedary camel, except not with gas, but with water. Because when their ancestors first reached a desert, one of them, Jake, started heading right into it. Now the others were like, there's no water out there, you can't cross that. But Jake said, not with that attitude, you can't, and he just kept on walking. So he died, pretty quick actually, but he inspired a whole bunch more, and they also died. Mainly dehydration, there's no water out there. But there were some others with a lot of patience and a lot less bravado that eventually evolved some incredible adaptations that allow them to do what Jake rest his soul had only dreamed of. Now there was quite a bit to get sorted. If you want to walk a desert, you need the right shoes. The ancestors of camels had hooves like this mouse deer, and that won't do in the sand. It's like stilettos on a bitch. Beach, Jerry. I said it's like wearing stilettos on a beach. You gotta listen. Anyway, over time, those hooves lost their hoovedness and transformed into something more suitable. Being an even-toed ungulate, each camel is equipped with eight camel toes, two on each foot. Therefore, in a game of rocks, paper, scissors, the camel always throws scissors. Each pair of camel toes rests upon a pad of fatty tissue, which forms a broad, fleshy, fleshy sort of dinner plate. And that right there will sit right on top of the sand. I mean, it is still sand, so there's soft patches here and there, and you need to make adjustments. And that accounts for their funky hind-ass quarters. Sorry, funky-ass hindquarters. I mean, you just look at it, you can tell something's off. Looks like they glued a chicken leg on a moose testicle. Because on nut camels, like the whores, skin and connective tissue connect the leg parts to the body, right above the knee, which is here. On the camel, not so much. Kind of keeps going up, like a wedgie of the hip. But this arrangement means that they have more lateral flexibility to help with balance on soft or uneven ground. You'll also notice that they don't have a lot of, well, they're not thick back there. And that's because they don't need a ton of muscle. I mean, crossing the desert's not a sprint, it's a mar- well, it's not a marathon either. It's more like your grandpapa crossing Central Park. Ooh, look, a bench. You want to make it out there, you gotta slow the f down, and that means a lot of sitting. I mean, camels treat sitting like it's a contact sport. I mean, I guess it is. But my point is, they're wearing the pads for it. Bridget can show you, but just fair warning, she got into some camel nip. Look, you got the knee pads, ankle pads, the toe joint pad, and a freaking chest pad. And with those high hips, they can sit right on top of those pads like a bunch of well-placed tevas, keeping all your sensitive bits off the hot sand. Then, of course, they have that hump, which is not really a pad. Sure, it might protect you from a falling monkey, but that's less common than you'd think. Some people think that they're filled with water. Ridiculous. No, it's air. That's why you don't wear anything sharp when you're riding them. You puncture the hump and... <laughs> camel just goes skipping across the dunes. Jerry, I know this isn't true. Well, I know they stopped fact-checking, but... Just, what do the science hippies say? Oh, it's fat? Well, that's lame. Apparently, these humps are filled with fat. Now, fat is an excellent way to store energy, but it's also a very good insulator. Works wonders, for example, for seals that live in cold water. But if a camel stored fat throughout its body, it would overheat in the hot sun. So instead, they put it all in a backpack or two, depending on the species, and you don't have that problem. So when a camel has good energy reserves, that hump is nice and firm, like Grandpapa's tummy. But if it doesn't eat for a while, that hump starts getting a little floppy floppy, like Grandpapa's... No, never mind. But fattening those humps up can be a challenge. There's not a ton to eat in the desert for a vegetarian, and the few plants that do manage to grow look all pissed off with the spikes and the thorns and the negative vibes. And this meant that the camel's mouth parts had to evolve for battle. Their lips became leathery and flexible. The bottom one can get a bit droopy, but that's because it acts almost like a finger that works with the top lip. Lips, really. Because the top lip splits into two parts near the front to help with grippage. And that's important because they don't have front teeth up top. So essentially, with a three-lip finger combo and an underbite, they can do some delicate work to get around those thorns. And to bring the food into the mouth hole, which for the plants is like the gates of hell. Just look at it. Camel's like, here's some f***ing spikes, you thorny bastard. Because their mouth is lined with these long, rubbery, cone-shaped papillae. Now these papillae add a layer of protection for the cheeks. But because they're pointed backwards, they also help transport the food in the direction of the exit butt. Sorry, the exit. But first they have to grind the food up a bit. Jenny, punctuation. The roof of the mouth and the tongue are covered in leathery pad. Everything's a leathery pad. Their mouth is like bondage porn. Anyways, there's molars in the back that are kept sharp by a side-to-side -side chewing motion. 
They look a bit like half-eaten caramels, but between them and the leathery pads, they make sure that all the spikies are ground up before they hit the tum-tums, where it all gets fermented to make hump-worthy fatty acids. Listen, I wouldn't mind having a hump like a camel do, but instead of fat, I'd want it filled with cash. And that's why I'm perusing a course in essential concepts in wealth building on the Imprint app. There's a reason that Imprint was Google's app of the year and was named Essential Education App by Apple. It's because Imprint is a way to turn your look at your phone every 10 seconds and get sucked into a mindless wormhole and come back out into a life-all-anxious habit into a bite-sized everyday learning habit that you can feel good about. There's a huge variety of courses and quick reads on topics like productivity, psychology, science, tech, history, it doesn't stop. This is interactive, bite-sized learning with clear text and visuals that you can understand. And it's all been designed using the science of learning. Major concepts are repeated, and you can take daily quizzes to make sure that what you've learned sticks in that brain hump of yours. Whether you want a quick read on AI or a multi-month course on the science of happiness, I mean, who doesn't want more happiness? Then you should try Imprint. Go to the link imprintapp.com slash zayfrank to get a seven-day free trial and 20% off an annual membership. I bet you're going to like it. Use that link and support this show. Try Imprint today. Where were we? Oh, right. So we know where they store the food, but what about all the water? I mean, there's not that many places left on these skinny bastards. I know where it goes in, and they can drink a lot of it. A hundred liters in ten minutes if they want to. That's a third of their body weight. We would die dead if we drank just five percent of our body weight. And that's because that water gets absorbed into the blood, and our salty little red blood cells would start pulling in that water, causing them to swell up and then burst. And you don't want that. But camel blood cells are built different. First off, they're oblong. <laughs> oblong. And unlike our cells, they can expand by 240% and still maintain their shape. So by storing water throughout their body, the camel can go 10 to 14 days without drinking anything. But of course, during that time, it's using that water and becoming dehydrated. Now once again, this would be a challenge for our blood. When they start losing water, our red blood cells change shape. They sort of flatten out and get gooey, And this makes it harder for them to flow, and then we die dead. And again, the camel blood cells can lose up to 40% of their water content and still maintain their shape. But maybe the real trick to going so long without drinking is not letting the water you have escape. And camels are like those peoples in the Doom movie, you know, the drug addicts that drink their own pee and aren't allowed to cry. They don't waste a drop. I mean, look at a camel's nose, it doesn't look that special. I mean, it can close all the way, that's something, but inside it's a water conservation machine. If you take a cross-section of their nasal cavity, you can see these sort of bloody cinnamon rolls. Those are coiled mucous membranes with a lot of surface area, and on that surface area there's a heat exchange with the air. When they breathe in hot air, it comes into this upper portion here and passes over membranes that are moist. Some of that moisture evaporates and is pulled back into the lungs. When they exhale, the cooler, moist air passes through this lower area where water condenses onto the membranes and is reabsorbed. It's like a little nasal air conditioning unit. Another way to lose water is sweating. To keep our body temperature stable when it gets hot, we leak out a bit of liquid, and when that evaporates, it pulls heat away from our body. But camels can allow their internal body temperature to rise all the way up to 106 degrees, which means they don't have to sweat as much. If we held a sustained fever like that, our brains would cook and we'd be died dead. But camels have a cool trick that goes back to that air-conditioned nose of theirs. The cooling mechanisms of their nasal cavity also cool off veins that run through those tissues. And that cooler blood would go back through the body and towards the heart. But when its internal temperature is very high, a section of vein constricts, and that redirects the cooler blood into this. The veins tangle up with a bunch of arteries and cool down the blood that's flowing through them. And guess where the blood in those arteries is going? To the noggin. Come on, they got a brain cooling system. It's amazing. Now, another place that you lose liquid is down by your nethers, and that's because our kidneys filter out a whole bunch of waste products from our blood. Water is used to dilute those concentrated waste products so that they can't damage our tissues or form crystals, like kidney stones. Some of you just shuddered. <laughs> Camel kidneys are much more efficient than ours and lose less water in the process, and that means the dehydrated camel urine can get quite syrupy, you know, and that'll dribble down a leg. But peeing on yourself has benefits. As it evaporates, it cools you down. See, they don't waste a drop. Now, between the efficient kidneys and those elastic red blood cells, a camel can tolerate nearly twice the amount of salt content in their body as we can. 
and that allows them to do this. You know what they're doing? They're drinking seawater. You try it. Well, don't try that, because you'll die super dead. And of course, camel turds are hard as rocks. You can play all sorts of games with them, like <laughs> throw the turds at Steve, <laughs> or like a fetish version of Princess and the Pea. <laughs> Listen, you'd be surprised by how many people felt like this was a good photography subject. I mean, I guess they're sort of like stop and smell the roses people, except stop and take pictures of camel shit. You know, it's like a club. Martha, quick, over here, I found the mother load. Anyway, one last way that camels can serve water is by doing this. I'm just kidding, the males do this to attract females. It's like an inflated part of their soft palate. And listen, I'm not one to judge the camel's looks, but if the females think that this makes the males more attractive, well, I guess you start wondering what it is they're looking for. No, I know he can be a dick, but it looked like he'd thrown up a whole cow liver. It was so hot. It was like a balloon made out of a placenta. Yeah, I'd hump that. Oh, blanc. Do you feel it coming? Do you feel it coming on? Do you feel it coming? Sad season. Do you feel it coming? Do you feel it coming on? Do you feel it coming? Sad season.